Alright guys, welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be showing you how I made my uh, DIY little record player. So this thing sounds pretty terrible, but it does work and it does actually produce music. And it's pretty cool just because, you know, it's using the process that um, these records are entirely analog. So you don't even need any amplification or anything to actually play them or any sort of um, processing. So... Basically, I have a record with a screw hole through it that, I mean, a screw through it that's bolted on that I stick in the chuck of this drill that I have standing upright with just a clamp. And I stuck some cardboard in here as just like a uh, cushion so that when I clamped it down, I could get it not only level, but also so it would stand upright. And then once I stick this up in my chuck, all right, now I got that all tightened up in my chuck. And so I can just move this in and out to adjust until it looks like the record's halfway level. Again, this is definitely not rocket science, so just get it halfway decently level, and uh, there we go. I have this rubber band tied around the um, throttle to uh, hold it in place so that once I get it pressed down a little bit, it'll kind of just stay and go. And I can see that obviously this record's all bent over the place, but you want to use an old record anyways for how we're playing it because the uh, needle will just tear the crap out of it. Anyways, so the actual uh, sound producing mechanism is just this cup with a um, like sewing pin stuck through it. So I went ahead and poked a hole in the bottom of the cup with the pin first on this side, and then I hot glued the pin and stuck it down through that side to make sure that um, it's nice and secure. And then I dab some more hot glue on the bottom and I bent it off so that it'll actually drag around the record a little better. Now this attaches on here and I just have a piece of um, all thread, but you could use any sort of dowel rod or anything like that just to hold it up and something that'll move in and outward to allow your cup to go the full length. Because I mean, because as it'll move in, as your uh, record is playing. You don't want it rigid. And then I just have this old, like, um, it's actually from a uh, dog poop bag roll, the uh, little axle or whatever, and you could you could probably find like a pen or something and cut off the end of it. And I just hot glued that to this um, little triangle-like mechanism I have, just a, a piece of wood, and then a spoon hot glued onto this cup to like brace it up. And so there you go. And now, if I just um, wedge something underneath this, because this uh, rubber band isn't quite strong enough, so I'll just wedge something underneath this to hold it, and then I'll show you how it works. All right, so I shoved some pliers under there. Now I can just hopefully start this off a little, a little bit too much. All right, now we're going, and all I gotta do is just take this and set it up on here. You can hear that the quiet parts are extremely quiet. And then the louder parts are kind of nauseating. And you can hear it skipping around a lot on the tracks because I think my needle's a little bit too thick. Or in the grooves, sorry. And then if I want to play one of these smaller records, uh, I think they're like 45 RPM or something. I just um, grab some tape and I'll just uh, stick it up on here, around here like that. I'll show you in one second. Right like that. And then I'll just uh, take this and get it kind of as centered as... I so now that's like kind of ish centered, but it doesn't really matter. Again, like I said before, this thing is not going to sound good. It's just kind of for playing around, something fun to do if you want to try it. And again, just use an old rec an old beat up record or something, because this uh, sewing needle is really going to tear it up. And then uh, 
Sounds like it needs to be sped up a little bit, maybe. Alright, so it looks like um, this needs to be mounted back a little bit farther, I think. Because as we get around to the inner parts here, it kind of starts like uh, skipping inward. Whereas on the outside, it does just fine. But as we get inside too far, it starts skipping around too much. So I think I need to maybe mount this back a little bit farther. But again, it's just taped on so I can adjust it however I want. Alright, I got a little farther back now. And it actually sounds better overall, I think. The uh, percussion parts actually don't sound too bad. Right, so yeah, pretty cool and a uh, very simple, easy project. Just uh, if you're bored, want to try out something. And um, I had, certainly had fun with it. I think I saw another dude on YouTube do this first. I'll put his video in the description if you guys want to check out his video. I think he did probably a little better job, but anyways, thanks for watching. Alright, so I was just trying to record a few little snippets and see how good I could make it. And um, it still sounds pretty bad, but slightly better. So yeah, um, I'll leave this as the outro. See how long you can bear through it. This is an RIAA curve that shows how records are recorded with a bias to higher pitches and therefore must be inversely equalized for accurate playback. This is done to minimize groove skipping as more bass heavy recordings create larger ruts and bigger bumps which contribute to the needle unintentionally hopping grooves. This is also why the use of a phono preamp is required prior to the amplification of a turntable output. I went ahead and tried to apply the RIAA curve to my digital recording. You have been listening to the original recording but listen to the contrast when I apply RIAA.